Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kinley with Asthma Scuba here in Rockford, Illinois, and we have Jillian Morris, and she's got some pretty cool stuff because two of my favorite animals is one octopi and obviously sharks. So, Jillian, you just give us a little bit of background for yourself. We have a lot of people interested, and if you do have questions, please submit them as we're going along, and we'll try to answer them as we go. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you, Brian, for having me. I'm always excited to talk about sharks. Um, so, I am a marine biologist that has focused uh, most of my work and research and travel on sharks. So I've spent a lot of time with these animals. I live in Bimini in the Bahamas, so we have a lot of sharks here as well. And I actually founded Sharks for Kids to teach students about them because I just want people to see a different side of them, to learn facts. And I always say, you don't have to love sharks. I do. You don't have to, but you can be excited about them and respect them, right? It's all about respecting the ocean and the animals there. Um, doesn't have to be love. If it is great, like we definitely need that, but you don't have to love something to still be able to protect it and care about it and, and, and want to make a difference. Right. Because they are so much, people don't realize their necessity as a part of our lives as a civilization, as our species ourselves. Um, so I know that you work with a lot of kids as far as that uh, tagging, right? Yeah, so Sharks for Kids offers a lot of programs. Uh, we really want to give kids all different opportunities, no matter where they live, to uh, dive in, right, and explore the ocean. And we use sharks as the, the feature to do that. So one of the things, um, we do shark tagging programs where um, we take uh, the students of different ages. This was a group of middle school girls down in the Keys that came out with us. And the idea is to give students a firsthand experience with what science and, and shark tagging looks like. Sometimes there's this idea that science is done by men, it's done in a lab. Um, and so kids, if that's all they've seen or heard, we want them to understand that no, science can be out in the field, working with the animals, um, what what's involved in that and why we're doing it because obviously if you see that photo the shark next to the boat and a bunch of kids is explaining and understand why why we have that shark what data we're collecting and really giving them that chance to be part of science to collect real data and then they carry that with them so even if they don't become scientists maybe they're inspired through that but they carry that experience with them and it can shape decisions they make, careers they pursue, and their connection to the ocean overall. So do these children have to be certified or do you have age groups specific to this or? So they don't have to be certified. It's really, it depends on the program. We also have one in Turks and Caicos, um, which is called Project Lemonade, where we're setting only lemon sharks, baby lemon sharks, which is really cool. And it's close to shore, uh, you know, very easy, accessible area in the mangrove. So we can actually take students out and that's a big part of it. So we tend to lean towards kind of middle school and up just because longer days in the field, it's a little, it's a lot for a little, like a, a you know, a much younger student. And I don't know how much they get out of it if they're not, you know, at a certain age. But when you start getting to like 12, 13, 14 and up, I think they get more out of it and they can participate, they can do more. Um, and they're okay being out in the elements, right? On the boat, on the water, in the sun, long days. And so, uh, yeah, I find that kind of middle school and up, I think they get more out of it. And um, it's really fun. Although this young student, I still remember this is one of the favorite moments I've actually ever had. Um, she was on the boat that day because I think she was somebody, a chaperone's daughter or something. She was eight. And she will 100% be a marine biologist. This kid was phenomenal. And getting her, what she's doing right there is she's actually taking a DNA sample. So we take a little clipping from the shark's dorsal fin. It's like clipping your fingernails or cutting your hair. It has their DNA. And if you're doing it right, cutting your hair, clipping your nails, you don't feel it. So the sharks aren't feeling this. That's why we do it on the fin right there. And we send that off to a lab and we can figure out shark family trees. Um, we can also use it to figure out their diet a little bit, along with some tissue samples and blood. But these projects and, and some of the work I'm doing with the lemon sharks, it's shark family trees. So if we ever caught mom, dad, brothers, sisters, things like that, just from that little piece of tissue that we take. So these <clears throat> these young uh, students that have come out there to do this project, which you, are there a long term? Are they able to see progress from what they've been able to tag or see movements or any of that? It's a part of that program. 
So it depends. Um, it really depends on the type of tags in the project. So um, that's out with the Guy Harvey Research Institute and in Nova Southeastern University. Um, one of our co-founders runs that program. So then what we do with that is we actually pay for Title I schools to go out on that. So students don't have to pay. Oh, sorry, my um, students don't have to pay. Um, Sorry, guys, I just got a new computer and all this stuff's linked to it. And it's, I'm like, I, didn't want, I didn't ask for that to be linked. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a it's an opportunity so that kids get to get out and they don't have to worry about cost. That's the biggest thing. All of our programs um, are free. Like we, we create everything so that no matter where you're from, you it's not a financial barrier to, act, to having access to these programs. Um, so with that, that's kind of a general like census of what sharks are in the area, looking at population sizes, time of year, um, kind of population dynamics. So those tags aren't ones that you can track um, regularly, not the satellite tags, which are far more expensive. So not as many projects have those, but they do have as another part of their program where they use those. So kids can follow that live. And um, and then like our lemon shark stuff, we do updates when we recaught them, we can let them know how much it's grown. And yeah, so it's, it depends on the type of tag, but yeah, there's definitely options for them to see long-term impacts and follow up with the sharks and, and learn more and see how it progresses. So that's my next question. Are you seeing any um, critical changes due to this research you've done over the past few years that uh, migration changes? I know we've had a lot more that are coming more towards shore. Are you seeing that as, as your research data? Is there any specific that you want to talk about? So I think in general, um, scientists are seeing changes from whether uh, animals that particularly didn't move as far north as water is getting warmer and further north we're seeing species that you might not have seen or animals aren't coming as far south because they don't have to to reach the warmer water or the seasons like they're coming earlier they're staying longer they're leaving later they're coming closer to shore if their food's coming closer to shore so um yeah i think overall ocean marine scientists shark scientists are seeing this for our project, the most recent one I'm working on with the lemon sharks, we've only in, we're only in year two. So what we found though this year is we saw less sharks. So what does that mean? Does that mean um, that because the lemon sharks, from what we know in the Bahamas, they actually go back to the area they were born to give birth, like salmon, sea turtles. So, but we don't know if that's true everywhere. So we're trying, that's also part of it. Is it, you know, are these females coming back, but they're not coming back every year. So if we had four females give birth last year, those same four females are not returning. Maybe only two are coming to this area because it's a small area and maybe it can't support three or four litters or 10 litters of pups. It can only support um, so many. So what'll be interesting is in our year three, do the numbers go back up or is something else? Is there fishing happening? Is there some coastal development that's taking mangroves away so they have less habitat? And that's really kind of, we're looking at all of those aspects to figure out really what's going on with that particular species and if protecting that area is really necessary. So I, what would be the impact if we're losing from fishing or because we're, we're taking over those areas? What are we looking at impacts, even for that small niche group? Um, what kind of impacts are you looking at? Well, when you take away mangroves, if that's a part of it, then you're affecting a lot of animals because mangroves act as nursery areas for a lot of really important species. And throughout the Caribbean, tourism and fisheries are super important for the livelihoods. Um, and so if your fisheries are impacted because you've removed a really significant species, even when they're little, they have a niche, right? They play an important role. And if you're removing that and then they don't grow up and they don't move to those other areas where they're more of a top predator, um, it's not just affecting that one small area. It could be affecting much larger areas that might be on different islands. Um, well, we won't know that until we start to have a better idea. And it's also, um, you know, tourism. People go to places to see animals, um, to have eco tours and experience nature. So if you don't have that, uh, that can also be a problem as well. So it's kind of the ocean brings us joy and we love to go see a healthy ocean, but it's also livelihoods for people. It isn't just those of us, you know, if you travel somewhere to dive and you see something really cool and you're spending money in that community, which is great, but people living there also have to make a living. So it's their livelihoods of the jobs. And when the oceans are healthy, it means there's diving and snorkeling and kayaking, um, but it also means there's food and there's food 
yeah, for, for people living there and also people visiting. Rotan has a lot of good programs they've been implementing, um, actually to marine parks and stuff and trying to bring that back and mm-hmm. educate those, the locals there for that balance that you're talking about. Yeah, I think yeah. my best shark experience, I'm going to ask you yours here shortly, is in uh, um, French Polynesia and Fakarava. There was over oh. a thousand sharks there. They were all coming in the currents. It was just amazing. For me, it was just mind blowing to see all the different types and be a part of them. What would be, what would you say was one of the most exciting moments for sharks for you? Uh, that's on my list to go see that because that is just like, I've seen images and videos and it just looks insane. It's, Amazing. It's, it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, so really lucky in Bimini, we have amazing sharks. Um, and I'd say probably the great hammerheads diving with them. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. They're, and it's the only place in the world that we know of that you get multiple, like they're traditionally a solitary species so if you see a great hammerhead but we've had up to 10 or 11 on a dive um in very shallow water uh it's anywhere from about 18 feet to 40 feet um so you're talking a pretty long bottom time which is awesome and clear water big animals and it's just it's a really really just they're incredible they're such a fascinating animal and they're you know such an iconic shape and if kids know one species of shark it's either great whites or hammerheads. Those are the ones that they, you know, those are the iconic species. Um, so I'd say seeing them, uh, I was also really lucky. I wasn't diving, but I was in the water. I got to see a lemon shark give birth and oh. yeah, they give birth to live young. So the babies come out, they have an umbilical cord, they have to break free. So it leaves them a little shark belly button, which is such a fun fact. Kids love it, right? They are like, I have a belly button. So cool. Um, and to see these little sharks start their life and they're perfect mini copies of mom and dad and they're on their own. That's it. And off to the world they go to, to try and find their way. So um, probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen just to, to see them start their life like that. That's the importance of those mangroves we're just talking about, because that's the mm-hmm. nursery for so many, even sharks. Everything kind of works together until they get a little bigger and you decide to eat each yeah. other. But yeah. that is that nursery, right? And so mm-hmm. the destruction yeah. um, is really impactful. Now, I know you've done some stuff with National Geographic also. Um, yeah, so I've done a couple of shows and stuff, and um, my husband actually films a lot. So he films a lot of TV shows. And, and uh, so, yeah, I've done a few things with them and different shows and different pieces. So um, done some stuff. We actually just did a show earlier this year that's coming out. Um, I think the first episode airs next week in the UK. It was a CBBC, so the kids BBC programming with some students and diving and um we had students from Bimini and students from the UK come together and a really really special project and they got to do a lot of sharky stuff so um yeah yeah so that's it's going to be really cool to see and um see the local kids here be able to have access to that and to get certified and um because so many people come to Bimini to dive with the great hammerheads the reef sharks the Bahamas in general so it's really cool when uh kind of the young kid like the next generation can start diving and seeing what the opportunities are to the future of it to be dive guides to be the ambassadors for the ocean and these animals and have an amazing career doing that and it's just it's giving them the chance to see that that opportunity exists and then helping make it possible for them so that'd be my next question as far as the audience is concerned i mean how can you know, every in any everyday diver or whatever the case may be, be a part of this. You know, programs or um, shark awareness or ambassadors or being involved in a program. You know, any, do you have anything that they can be directed towards um, to help them be a part of this? Yeah, I mean, in general, um, as far as sharks for kids stuff, we're always looking for people to. Um, talk to kids, teach kids. If you're a diver, um, sharing your experience, or even if you don't want to do anything like really um, kind of more involved or complicated or something. If you're a diver, go to school, do a talk. I mean, bring your gear, bring anything. Kids love it. Share your photos and videos, talk about it. Um, Grab a book, read it at the library. I mean, there's really, yeah, it's it's really, um, it doesn't have to be this complex thing. The ocean is amazing. And if you've been in it and you want to share that, it's kids will love it and you will it will be so much fun. You will enjoy it. Um, or if it's not, you're, you're like, oh, talking to kids. I don't know. 
find somebody who might and share, you know, there's ways to do that. Um, we're always looking for people who want to deliver talks and do stuff um, and, and support that no matter where you live. Um, I think also just encouraging kids that to, to learn to dive no matter where you live. Um, it doesn't have to be not everybody lives near the ocean, but there's still so many opportunities to, I mean, you start, we all start in the pool, right. And practice and do all that. Um, and then wherever else you travel, but it, I think it's, it's a gateway for a lot of opportunities that maybe people don't realize. And it isn't just something that people do to travel and it's fun. It is. Yeah. But there's, you know, you can do fish count programs, citizen science, coral nursery restoration, um, shark IDs. There's so many options that and programs that you can go and be a volunteer diver or intern or get involved with to, to use that thing that you love to kind of benefit a bigger picture. Um, and so it's really cool when there's ways to, to do that and to share that um, and then come back and share it. You know, if you go do something, um, sharing it, talking about it, and even the chance for kid, local kids to do a Discover Scoop in the pool, just to try right. it. I mean, all of those things, there's, there's endless things to get involved. Um, yeah, no matter where you go. Mitch is actually putting up a thing. He says he loves lake fish. We have all lake fish around here. So sure. everybody asks me, what kind of fish is that? And I really don't. I'm like, I don't know, lake fish. I don't, that's what I call them. <laughs> yeah. so I'd rather be in the ocean mm -hmm. uh, doing things. So is there any specific uh, organizations that you would suggest for our divers um, to, to even be a part of or try to volunteer time or, as you said, um, present some stuff in some local schools? Yeah, I mean, as far as it, anyone who's watching who's interested in, in shark stuff, we, we have lots of materials and resources. You can also let the teachers at the school know. Essentially, on our website, it's all free, and it's teaching guides. So it's a you have a PowerPoint, but there's all the information. Even if a teacher never seen a shark, somebody doesn't even know what a shark is. No idea. We've made it as simple as possible to make it so that teachers want to bring it to the classroom or a homeschool educator, um, scout troops. I mean, we've really made it. And then there's all sorts of fun activities um, and games and crafts. And, you know, if you have a, a scout meeting, you want to do something fun. We have some cool shark crafts, um, watch a little video and then make a hammerhead shark out of a toilet paper roll. I mean, super simple, but really fun and stuff that you know, you already have at home kids, everybody bring in a toilet paper and some paper and yeah, right. It's fun because well, we did it so that it was so kids could, you didn't have to go out and buy a bunch of fancy, expensive um, supplies. It's stuff that you have at home. Um, I think, you know, we try to make that as easy as possible. Uh, Coral Restoration Foundation always has a great volunteer diver program. I know you can come in and do clean corals, plant, transplant corals, do all that. Um, Reef has their photo ID stuff they do. So, um, and I'm sure, you know, I know a lot of East Coast stuff. I'm sure there's stuff out with like Monterey Bay Aquarium has programs. Um, and even, you know, I don't know if you guys have an aquarium near you, but a lot of times aquariums have a diver program as well that you could be a volunteer diver to help with um, cleaning and anything. Just they have usually have a really cool program. In Iowa, I know they have. They've actually had people come in there to do that. Um, and then Rotan, actually, we worked with some cleaning some corals and stuff like that. And it was an epoxy them down. That was great. Um, and I saw that it's the sharkforkids.com, right? So this is, you started this program for kids. Yeah. So all that information, all that stuff there, um, people can, can go there to get, to, to help out and really kind of um, promote it. With promoting it, though, I, I would also ask, how best do you describe an interaction with a shark? I have a couple that's heading to uh, French Polly. Actually, they're going to uh, Maria, and she's a bit nervous about seeing sharks, which are to me are just. I had one just uh, two weeks ago when I was on a on a dive trip, and then I was just you know the pregnant one. She was sitting there and had the other ones kind of protecting her. Um, how would you describe the best way to say they're just puppy dogs? They don't really, they don't care. Um, what would you how would you put that? Well, I think you know. My biggest thing is they're wild animals, right? Any sure. wild animal deserves our respect, right? But you can have really incredible encounters with them. People do it all the time all over the world. Um, and so I think, you know, especially a place with Morea where you may have a more shallow opportunity first, kind of to see some smaller species and just build your comfort level. Um, don't chase them. Enjoy them. You know, keep yourself calm and relaxed. And 
most of the time when people see a shark for the first time and the shark has zero interest in them, right? Swims away because we're also a big predator in the water. And, um, you know, chances are, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. (gasps) Um, so for the most part, the shark at the top is what the media, right? Wants you to see a white shark teeth out. That's not what most people encounter when they encounter a shark. Um, so I'd say enjoy it, but make sure you're comfortable with your gear, um, everything else, calm, cool, excited, and just watch the shark. I mean, they're yeah. really, really beautiful. And I, most people, when they have that first moment and they go, oh, wow, it's so cool. Look at it swimming. Look at it moving. Oh, it did that. Oh, it's doing this. They're not thinking about, oh, whew, it's an, you know. It's not interesting. You're going to see that. Um, And usually when they're interested, it's because there's food being introduced as far as like bait, somebody spear fishing in the Bahamas. We get all these sharks on these dives regularly because they're fed. There's bait introduced. Um, They're extremely intelligent. And and so that can be a really amazing experience when done properly. Um, So, you know, that's the thing is just enjoy the moment, get yourself calm and comfortable with all your gear. And I think just, just be excited, but you don't need to do like a 150 foot dive with a thousand sharks, your first shark dive. I, 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 maybe not. That's maybe some people, but if you're a little nervous, ease into it, take steps right. so you really enjoy it. I tell people, I said, we're not a part of their food stores. They're inquisitive. Sharks are very inquisitive. They like to come up and kind of check things out, but they yeah. keep their distance because they don't, they're not looking to actually do anything. They're yeah. just checking things out. And Karen is saying that her first shark dive was a life-changing moment for her because it's incredible. And that's what I try to explain to people. Once you get that experience, right, it's just you will you will not forget those moments that you're able to sit mm-hmm. there and you're in awe uh, of the beauty of the, of the sharks down there. And the ocean uh, in general, right? It's a way oh, for yeah, us so- to be in their world and to have a glimpse of that. I mean, we're so lucky that we can even spend a moment there and – yeah, I always tell people, I was like, if you get a chance to put your face in the ocean, whether it's snorkeling or diving, take it. Because it's not like anything, even if the most beautiful photos in the world can't really help you understand what it's like. And so take that opportunity. And it's it's genuinely something I hope everyone gets a chance to do. And I wish that everyone did is just, yeah, to put their face in and, and see that even just for a moment, because it's it's so special and so beautiful and not like anything we have up here on land. As a matter of fact, uh, Sarah's son, uh, Miles, had, I understand he, he thought there was still Megalodon in the Marianas Trench. And I said, nope, they're not around anymore, but there are six and seven gills that are deep water sharks. Mm-hmm. Um, so for a lot of people out there, they feel like there's this big monstrous shark out there that's going to eat them. Um, on average, would you say a shark is six to nine foot on, on the, on the uh, adult female um, mid ocean kind of right. Would would you say? Yeah, I mean, honestly, about eighty percent of all shark species are five feet or less. Uh, okay. The big Your ones, reef sharks, the ones and, yeah. The big ones are the ones that get attention, right? Shark Week isn't airing the little guys. It's the great whites, the tigers, the hammers. Yeah, there are very big animals, six and seven gills, um, thresher sharks. There are very right. big species, but on the whole. They're not. And right. a lot of the ones, um, you know, you're going to encounter in places might be way smaller than you think. And right. and so which is cool, because, I mean, there's there's over 500 different species of shark. Um, but the ones that get the most attention tend to be the larger ones um, that are, you know, people like adrenaline rush and the, you know, the bigger animals a little bit more exciting, right? That's, I mean, that's human nature, but they're not the only ones. And uh, yeah, so I think that's important to, uh, to remember. So another question, um, cause we're patty shop. I've been, a, I've been an instructor for patty for 20, <coughs> well, since 2001. So I remember 22 years. I've been, I've been diving for over 30 with patty. Um, you're a patty ambassador. So what does that entail? Just give us some, uh, why patty um, versus any other organization? Well, um, yeah, I did. I've done training through um, patty and then I actually started with PDIC, but no one really knows where it was. I was in Maine. It was what my instructor had. And then I, I crossed over because I was like, I don't know that, that, you know, but it's one of the older ones, I guess. So um, and then it just, you know, I did my training through them and I just really love the family kind of the community that they've built and they're always i think they're always trying to do more and more with that so it isn't 
just diving. It's what your diving can be and what it can do and um, sort of the opportunities it creates to make your dive more, be more, right? You can, you can simply just enjoy a dive, but there's also just the beauty in whether it's photography or shark awareness, it's an opportunity to learn and then take that um, to the next step. So I think for me, I'm really proud of it because diving really, I think has given me so many incredible opportunities and I've met wonderful people. I've seen beautiful places and diving has, has created that for me. Um, and I think it has for a lot of people. And I think then being an ambassador diver is sharing that and, and encouraging other people to try it and to see that it's so much more than just scuba diving, right? It's so much more than that. And anybody who dives very quickly realizes that it is so much more than that. Um, yeah. And it's, I mean, you're seeing people like it's life changing and it does, it, it opens so many doors and just really lets you be part of an incredible community of people that love the ocean, that care about it, that want to protect it because we want to see it for our kids, our grandkids, the future. And we understand how important it is. And it connects all of us from all over the world that share this. And I think that's really, really special. I try to tell people, I says, it's just as much above the water as it is below the water when you're amongst divers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The camaraderie, I, it, you could be an astronaut to a janitor, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all about the same thing. We love the ocean, we love mm-hmm. the things that are in there. Um, and being basically kind of eco, uh, eco-friendly is a different way of putting it, but we're very much a part of watching how things interact and the sharks and things like that and why they're mm-hmm. so important to us and why we need to be more paying more attention to that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So in Bimini, do you have any programs like if somebody wanted to go there, is there any specific programs they should look into in your area that would be of interest? Yeah, so I don't run any stuff here. I mean, we do programs at the schools, but uh, the Bimini Scuba Center, awesome shop. Um, We do stuff when we do our field trips with the kids. So we actually um, provide free field trips where the kids get to go out and see sharks and rays. We have a cool shallow site with stingrays and nurse sharks and little black nose sharks that come in and the kids get to... um, snorkel they get to wade in get comfortable and then snorkel and we always do a beach cleanup then we have a reef shark site that they get to watch you know go see the sharks from the boat um and so they're a phenomenal shop um a lot of local crew and that were actually right from bimini which is a very tiny island and um yeah so it's it's a really awesome um crew to work with and they support you know, the programs that we're doing. And we just did a summer camp with them, which was amazing. The kids got to swim with wild dolphins, try a dive, go see the sharks. Um, Yeah, I would have loved that. And so we had 14 or 15 local high school students that got to go out and do that. And I know a bunch of them are already like, can we get certified? So we're trying to figure out that next step of how do we, you know, figure out getting um, them, give them the chance to, to get certified. So, um, yeah, so it's uh, so I would definitely recommend checking them out for shark dives, dolphins, wreck, shipwrecks. There's a lot of stuff here, um, training programs as well. So um, they're just a really great crew. They care about the sharks. Um, they do a. They're the ones that develop the hammerhead dive here. So um, if you wanna, if you wanna the best hammerhead dive, I would say you want to book with them. Um, it's nice. just incredible. And they just, they support the community. They support the conservation aspect. So um, I always tell people when you're going to go somewhere and dive, um, particularly with sharks as well, is find out what that that shop is doing. Like, are they involved? Are they, you know, are they concerned about the animals? How do they run the dives? What are their awareness, community engagement, um, and, and find out, cause then sometimes there might be ways for you to get involved. So not every shop is the same, not every operator, boat operator. So do a little research and, um, find a company that you feel good about and, um, you will, they're, they're out there. Um, and you know, and oftentimes if you're working with your local dive shop and they're traveling, that's a great way to start because you've done all the hard work, right. And you work with certain operators in other places yes. because, and you probably do multiple trips. So you've done the heavy lifting of the research to find the right place. And now they just get to go enjoy it and be part of it. Yeah. So like I said, we did that in Rotan with the group. And I, I do, if we can find avenues for people to be a part of um, the project to, to assist in what's going on out there, um, yeah. we try to do those things. 
Yeah, um, cool. So I had one of the questions as far as the schools. What if we had we're in Rockford, Illinois, obviously in the Midwest, and and if one of our people was talking to a, a middle school classroom, um, what avenues do they have to actually presenting it to to possibly having some of those middle schoolers come a part of that? Is it as a group? Do, do you have something that is it a part on, on your website of, of setting up groups to come out and do things? So we're starting to do more of that. We've been asked to do it and kind of understand how that's going to work. So I would definitely say check out the website. Um, we did have, I know groups have come in. Um, we had a, a dive shop. I can't remember where they came in from maybe Georgia had a group of high school students that came in and kind of had a program with the dive shop. And then I went in and did some talks and, and it was awesome. So I think there's definitely, we're trying to figure out how we can do more of that um, and figure out to give kids those opportunities and to start it out with, you know, maybe it's a virtual lesson to start with to kind of intro and stuff. And then maybe they're doing their, try a dive there and then coming and doing checkout dives. I think there's a lot of room to develop more of that. And it's something we're really trying to figure out because we do want to give kids that, especially kids that don't live in the ocean, the opportunity to come participate. Um, and it's, yeah, it's actually some conversations our team has been having over the last six months of, okay, what do we need to do? And whether it's dive stuff here, but also um, we partner with groups to do tagging um, research trips uh, in Florida, which is probably easier sometimes than Bimini to get to. So how do we make that accessible as well for groups to come in and participate in a three or four day workshop all about science and, and stuff. So I would say definitely check out the website. Um, we do have a newsletter, which is kind of where we share these things first, social media pages, things like that. Um, and, and keep in touch with that because that's one of the projects we're really trying to focus on to figure out what and how we can do it. I think the virtual classroom would be an amazing start, especially for, mm -hmm. you know, obviously your demographics and, and, yep. and, and affordability, yep. um, having that uh, a, a virtual yep. classroom that they yep. can actually essentially be a part of everything, tagging and seeing yeah. it happening live or, or yeah. in that case, and, and asking questions would be an amazing start to, to especially in this area, to, to, get people, to get those children involved. Because um, we have a lot of people love Shark Week here. Yep. Um, and I, I, I understand, didn't you have worked with, did some stuff with Shark Week at one point? In time? I have, I had, I did a show a few years back. Um, like my husband films for a lot of them. He was just, he, he films for Shark Fest and Shark Week. Um, so yeah, so we, we do, um, and a lot of the crews come through Bimini and stuff. So, um, I have done, done shows in the past. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, um, I would say any, if there are teachers watching or parents, I mean, we do offer virtual lessons year round. Uh, we've always done that. So uh, anything from just a general intro to sharks to careers in science, careers around diving, um, all the, you know, from kids that are in kindergarten all the way up to grade 12. So uh, that's, we do that. We love doing that. Um, In-person visits as well. We don't have anybody in Illinois, but if we have had schools and communities um, organized for someone to come out, um, we did a whole week in Arkansas. We've done Texas. Um, so when we find that the school board kind of comes together, we figure out and make a figure out how to, you know, get everybody there and, and do that. And, and usually like we've had a local hotel say, we'll donate rooms or, you know, we, we make it work. The community comes together sure. and, um, and then we go through and I think in five days we spoke to like, I can't remember 2000. No, that was 5,000. We did 5,000. Like the team splits up and we just crank really? and go and, and do as we spend a full day and we share as much information and fun stuff with as many kids as we can. Um, so those are always an opportunity as well that our team has done and continues to do. And, but virtual, obviously there's huge costs to that. It's possible, but virtual is we just get on the computers because it's amazing and we can share, um, you know, some really cool shark stuff and it's the lessons are really interactive and we cater them to the specific grade, what the teacher wants us to talk about, topics to cover, um, and it's a lot of fun. We do have some educators that are part of our group, so if you're listening into this, um, this would be a great opportunity to bring it to the schools and have substance, uh, substantive um, uh, information that you can actually present. That'll be that'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, I know we were on a time constraint for you, so I want anything you want to add or anything you, you think that would be really important for the audience to know about sharks or where to go or, or anything, anything. Yeah. Well, I think, um, yeah, I, I think anyone watching live or following up, um, we do love 
sharing sharks with kids that don't near live near the ocean. I think that's more important than even kids who are coastal um, because the ocean matters for kids in Illinois, in Iowa, in Idaho, in Colorado, even if they don't realize it. And it's kind of a big concept to grasp. Like, I've never seen the ocean. What do you mean? It's important for me. So I think connecting kids there with the ocean as best we can and using sharks to do that because they're amazing and exciting and interesting and weird um, is a really great stepping stone for that to get them fun to help them understand that you're connected to the water and then once they get that then I think it gives kids the ideas of what opportunities exist um, for careers and or things that they can just do locally that make an impact that maybe they didn't realize and and kids are kids are powerful kids make a difference they influence their peers they influence their parents um and they have a voice and so helping them feel like they're involved and part of something is also really powerful and i think yeah so i do hope that if you know if they're parents teachers scout leaders we would love to connect with you. I'd love to share these resources. Um, and, and yeah. And then I also would say if you ever get a chance to come diving in Bimini, it's, it's really special. It's, uh, yeah, such an incredible place and the animals we have here and the community and, um, it's a tiny little island, very, very tiny island, uh, two little islands together actually, but it's really, really special. And, um, yeah, I, I love sharing it with people. I love, you know, telling people to come here, get a chance. Maybe the shop will organize a, a trip. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's just a really special place. But regardless of where you go, you know, get underwater, get your face underwater and see that world, experience that. And it will, to some aspect, it will change your life. It will, honestly, yes. it really yeah. will. So um, I encourage everyone to, to do that uh, and find a way. Yes. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jillian, I really thank you for coming on. And it's, I, we appreciate that because, again, we're just trying to promote what diving can do for people, um, especially for the young ones, because that's really what we need to focus on. And if we're going to do anything for our oceans, we have to, as you said, we have to work with the young ones there. Um, and I'm going to ask if there's any last questions, before, uh, see if anything comes up, if any last questions we may have before we let uh, Jillian go. Um give it a few moments there but no we really appreciate it and and uh you'll be we'll be putting this on our, our youtube channel uh, for people to see and i would love to put together a group to come out there and actually obviously the great hammerheads i've got that one tattoo to my leg oh, cool. um, so uh that would be obviously for me so it means a little selfish but i'd love to put a, a group together to go out there yeah well, we'll we'll keep in touch and i think it'd be really cool to work with you to create something maybe a student you know a youth day at the shop we could do some fun things and and uh, you know we've done that before with dive shops and kind of work with you and um create some kind of fun interactive day with the virtual and a mix of stuff and and make it fun just to get kids even to see the gear and to talk about sharks and ocean animals and and just to start getting them excited and interested right. about it i think that would be really cool as well because patty shark day uh sometime this week right uh no it was in july actually oh did yeah, I miss it? okay yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's Shark Awareness Day. I mean, they do a big thing, but it's actually so cool. It's become a huge thing um, around the world, which is which is awesome. Um, so it's July fourteenth. Um, it's sort of uh, a holiday for <laughs> we love it. We're we're like every day is we you know we try to sell these animals every day, but um, it just shows you that conversations are happening and the change. Um, it, it, we're seeing it because the world is, is celebrating these animals and um, the conversations we're having, the things we're talking about, things divers are sharing, social media is a powerful tool. Um, yeah, that's the other thing. If you have divers, you guys have cool photos, share them, post them, talk about diving, share it with your friends. I mean, you have these platforms now that you can share all the cool things um, and, you know, phones can go underwater now. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's really made... I think being able to share your experience a lot more accessible um, and then being able to share it with people and get them excited and inspire somebody else um, to go explore and see what the ocean's like. So um, yeah, talk about it, share it, celebrate it. Yeah. 
Becca was just putting out a thing saying thanks for the information because her whole family, we actually, there's a, the Poles family actually kind of all dives. We've been a, long, a lot of places and some of their action in education. So uh, I think it was some great information and everybody's very, very thrilled and happy to, to have heard what you had to say and hopefully Shark for Kids, people go on there and, and check it out and see if you can get some information. Um, and uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right, guys, we will see you next time.